Hi everyone, welcome back to Eagle Forum's Capitol Hill Update. I am Tabitha Walter, the political director of Eagle Forum. And hello, I'm Kirsten Hassler, our executive director. We have some great news for you this week. President Trump signed an executive order at the end of last week called Protecting Vulnerable Newborn and Infant Children. This EO essentially codifies the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act into law for healthcare entities that receive federal funding. You may remember that the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act ensures that babies being born alive, alive after a failed abortion are given the same medical care that would be given to another infant born at the same gestational age. It also mandates that a medical practitioner must transfer the baby to a hospital if needed to continue care. It's a little bit of a mouthful saying that whole entire name of that bill, isn't it? Yeah. (laughs) But anyways, specifically, the president's executive order tasked the Department of Health and Human Services with ensuring hospitals comply with obligations under federal law to provide appropriate screening and medical treatment or transfer for infants, especially those born prematurely and with disabilities, and otherwise promote efforts to improve the survival of such infants. The president said in the executive order that there are a handful of laws he is using to justify this decision. And, quote, despite these laws, some hospitals refuse the required medical screening examination and stabilizing treatment or otherwise do not provide potentially life-saving medical treatment to extremely premature or disabled infants, even when parents plead for the treatment. Hospitals might refuse to provide treatment to extremely premature infants born alive before 24 weeks of gestation because they believe these infants may not survive, may have to live with long-term disabilities, or may have a quality of life deemed to be inadequate. Active treatment of extremely premature infants has, however, been shown to increase their survival rates. And the denial of such treatment or even the discouragement of parents from seeking such treatment for their children devalues the lives of these children and may violate federal law, end quote. This has certainly been a long time coming, and we're so thankful for the president standing up for life and being the most pro-life president ever. So happy for that. So on other news this week, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has been trying to come to a deal on a stimulus package with Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin. Uh, Just full disclosure, it hasn't went well. (laughs) Originally, (laughs) House Democrats drafted a $2.2 trillion COVID relief bill called Heroes 2.0. It expands Obamacare, cuts $600 million in police funding, and bails out Planned Parenthood. Now, this bill is going to be voted on any minute now, and House Republicans are not happy about this whatsoever. Heroes 2.0 is a highly partisan bill, and one in which Eagle Forum is against, of course. Yet again, House Democrats fail to see the consequences of these trillion-dollar bills. Ugh, it's just one after the other, isn't it, Tabitha? Yeah. <laughs> Well, for more information on both the pro-life executive order and this COVID bill, you could head on over to our website, eagleforum.org. You might also consider signing up for our weekly emails and alerts, as well as our monthly Eagle Forum report. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's Capitol Hill Report. We plan to see you here at the same time next week. See ya.